I'd like to add a second server to Internet Information Services. So if I go to Tools and I go to Internet Information Services and I expand my websites, I see the single default website, which already comes with the server. Now, if I go into a web browser and I put in the IP address of my server, we can see I get the default Internet Information, information Services web page. Well, let's say I want to create a second site, and that second site is uh, going to be used maybe for an intranet or just another website for my company. So I go to Sites, and I right-click, and I choose Add Website. Now, if you missed the part for how to install Internet Information Services, I have a video in this playlist. So just check it out, and you'll see the step-by-step -step on how to install it. So I'm going to call this site the Welcome Site. So I'll just call it Welcome. And I'll give it a physical path of the C drive. And you can put this anywhere you want as long as you have proper rights set up. And that would be anonymous usage has to have read access. And then INET pub. And I'm going to create a new folder in INET pub and I'll call it welcome. And I'll click OK. And we see the path is now INET pub welcome. Now we have the binding. Now this is the tricky part because our first website, the default website, is already listening on port 80. And it's listening on, for port HTTPS for the certificate, it's listening on 443. So we can't have a second site listening on the same ports unless we create what's called a host header. And we put in the host name here. So we have a host name for the default website and we have a host name for the second website. And so you can, you can choose. You can either change the port. So it listens on a different port like 444 or you can leave the port the same and put in a host name. Let's choose the port first. I'm going to just choose HTTP because we don't have to worry about certificates here. So if I put in 81 for the port and I leave the host name blank, then that's fine. All done. So now I have my default website and my welcome website. I've got to put in what's called a default document. So if I click on the default document, it's looking for any one of these names, and it will try to process these names in order. I'll go ahead and create a web page called default.htm in that location. So I'll go to the C drive, and I'll go to INET pub, and I'll go to my welcome folder. Next, I want to go to view and make sure that file name extensions is turned on. Otherwise, when you go to create something, you may create a double extension. So for instance, if I create a new text document and I call it, welcome to my site, file save as, I'm gonna go into the C drive, go into INET pub, welcome, and I'll call it default.htm because we know that's what it's looking for. And close. So if I don't have my file name extensions box checked, it'll just be called default and you won't realize what the extension even is. Although you can get an idea by the little icon next to it and you can hold your mouse over it if you want to hover. But a lot of people don't realize that and they end up giving it a double extension. So I'm going to make sure it's showing those file name extensions. And now I'm going to go into my web browser and do a colon 81 because we're listening on that port now. Hit enter. And now it says, welcome to my site. So I actually created a whole second website just based on a different port. I can also do the same thing by putting in a different name, but I would have to put a different name into both places. So if I go into welcome and I go into bindings, and I edit my binding, I'd have to put in a name such as welcome and then followed by the same uh, domain name as my, uh, my Active Directory domain. I could also create a whole new domain as well, but I have to change DNS to do that. There we go, welcome.techpub.us. And the default name also has to have a different name as well. I'm gonna get rid of my Certificate one, just so we're playing with the same thing here. And I'm going to call this default.techpub.us. Click OK, click Close. Now I've got to go into DNS Manager and create a couple of host records. And 
And my domain is called techpub.us for Active Directory. I have some other domains here as well, but those are not my Active Directory domains. Those are just separate domains that I use for various other tools and, and services. So now I'm going to create a new host record, and I'll call one Welcome. And I'll put in my IP address, which is the IP address of the server I'm on. And I'm going to create a second one called default. I'm going to add that as well. Now, if I have created a different domain name altogether, I would have to go into forward lookup zones, create a new zone, and put in a new domain. And you can choose primary zone or uncheck Active Directory since it's not really for Active Directory. And you can put in the zone name such as welcome.info or hello.net, something like that. And then we'd create the same A records inside that zone, just as I did here. So now that I've got welcome and default, I need to make sure that they're both listening on port 80 and make sure that they're still running. Because if you're not using host headers and you have them both on port 80, one of them is going to fail. So there's 81. I'm going to change it to 80. Click OK. And the default website, I'm just going to confirm it's also running on 80, and it is. All right, and look at that. Both websites are still working because I'm using host headers. So I'm going to change this one back to 80, but I'm also going to give it a different name. So I'm going to do HTTP colon slash slash, and I'll put in welcome.techpub.us. And it still shows my welcome site, so that worked. Fantastic. Now I'm going to call this next one default.techpub.us. And I see the default website. So that worked as well. So uh, I've used here host headers to separate the web pages. Now take a look. If I remove my host headers, watch what happens. So I'll get rid of that here. And I'll get rid of this here. So now both websites are going to be listening on port 80 without a host header, which you can't work. See, look at this. We're getting an error saying the binding for port 80 is already being used for a different site. So you can do it with host headers, but you can't do it without them unless you change the port on one of the websites. So that's how you use host headers in IIS and Windows Server 2019. And it's also how you create a new website.